بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off last week. And that was where the red highlighted text is. And where the Shaykh was discussing the second Nullifah of Islam from the book. The Nullifah of Islam of Shaykh uh, al-Islam. Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahmatullah. And so the Shaykh he mentions, continuing on. He mentions, he says, Fahada, Fahada. هو هو الناقض الثاني من نواقض الإسلام قال من جعل بينهم وبين الله وسائط يدعوهم ويسألهم الشفاعة ويتوكل عليهم فقد كفر إجماعا أي بإجماع المسلمين أهل البصيرة بكتاب وسنة النبي صلوات الله وسلامه عليه So then the Sheikh he reiterates as he as he gets towards the end of his explanation of this second nullifier of Islam and he reminds us, he says, and this is the second nullifier from the nullifiers of, of Islam in this particular book that we're reading and he reminds us of what that is and he quotes the original author, he says, whoever puts between himself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a middle person, a middle thing, an intermediary, as I say in English, an intermediary, something in the middle. And the Sheikh has explained to us and given us examples of that where people, you know, they may go to a dead person, they may go to a live person and ask dua directly and things like this. And obviously sharing their worship with other than Allah, committing shirk, as the Sheikh has mentioned in previous lessons that we have uh, translated. And so the Sheikh reminds us of the original author's statement here in his book. So whoever puts between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a, um, an intermediary and calls upon that intermediary and asks that intermediary for intercession, for example, and places all of, it, all of their trust or their places their trust in this intermediary, then in this situation, the person has committed Kufr, disbelief, ijman. And the Sheikh explains what does he mean by ijman? Means by the consensus of the Muslims. The, the consensus of the Muslims and from, you know, the, the, the scholars themselves, because the scholars, they are the, the consensus here. But the scholars of the Sunnah have clarified this and agreed upon this that whoever does this has left the fold of Islam. So then, uh, and, and the Sheikh says, in accordance with the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Sheikh, he continues, and this is just going to be a, a summary of uh, a, a summarized points and benefits from the Sheikh as we're going to finish the second, uh, uh, second um, nullifier today. And inshallah, next week, we'll start with the third one. So the Sheikh, he, he says here, he says, وَأَخْتِمُ الْحَدِيثِ حَوْلَ هَذَا النَّاقِذِ بِالْتَنْبِيهِ عَلَى قَاعِدَةٍ شَرِيفَةٍ وَعَذِيمَةٍ نَبَّهَ عَلَيْهَا الْمُصَنِّفُ رَحْمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ كَشْفَ الشُّبُهَاتِ مُسْتَمَدَّةٍ مِنْ قَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب وأخر متشابهات فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ 
فيبتغون ما تشابه منه ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم يقولون والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما وما يذكر إلا أولو الألباب. So then the Sheikh says, and I want to finish this part of this book, this section that we currently have been on. He says the Sheikh says I want to finish this off by mentioning uh, uh, a benefit and bringing our attention uh, to uh, some points that he's taken from a book called Kashfa Shubuhat, which is also the same author, Sheikh Al Islam Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab, and it's a different book that inshallah we may go through as well. Uh, if Allah grants us the ability to do so, um, then Kashfa Shubuhat, this book exposing the doubts, is a book uh, with the English meaning, let's say, English translation of uh, exposing the doubts uh, and you know the, the popular. Uh, it was popular doubts amongst Muslims that, that we come across with regards to the deen. And the Sheikh says that he's going to bring some benefits from that book and he's going to support it um, by way of the speech of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And as he has done straight away here when we've read this ayah, this is what the Sheikh has brought as evidence. So if we go to uh, the Quran <clears throat> or we go to the Mus'haf and go to Surah to Ali Imran verse 7, then we'll see uh, the meanings, the meaning of this, what we've read. So I'll read the whole, the whole ayah. It is he who has sent down to you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the book, this Quran. In it are verses that are entirely clear. They are the foundations of the book. And those are the verses of Al-Ahkam, commandments, etc. Al-Faraid, obligatory duties, and Al-Hudud, legal laws for the punishment of thieves, adulterers, etc. And others not entirely clear. So as for those in whose hearts there is a deviation from the truth, they follow that which is not entirely clear thereof, seeking al-fitna, polytheism and trials, etc., and seeking for its hidden meanings. But none knows its hidden meanings except Allah and those who are firmly grounded in knowledge. And those who are firmly grounded in knowledge say, we believe in it, the whole of it, clear and unclear verses are from our Lord, and none receive admonition except men of understanding. And that's from the tafsir of Tabari. <clears throat> and so the Shaykh he goes on to say, فَهَذِي الْآيَةُ الْكَرِيمَةِ مِنْ سُورَةِ آلِ إِمْرَانِ تُفِيدُ الْمُسْلِمَ وَلَوْ كَانَ عَامِيًّا قَائِدَةٌ شَرِيفَةٌ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ فِي السَّلَامَةِ مِنْ شُبُهَاتِ أَهْلِ الْبَاطِلِ وَتَلْبِيسَاتِ عِمَّةِ الضَّلَالِ so then the Sheikh says to us that he explains here and he says, so this is in this noble ayah is from the, uh, is from Surah to Ali Imran and it benefits the Muslim even if that Muslim is a general Muslim from the general population of the Muslims. It is a, a it is an important principle and one that will help basically help us in almost every single affair that we may face. And the Sheikh, he goes on to explain this. He says, it says in this particular subject that we're discussing at the moment within this chapter. And he says that it'll keep you free and safe from the doubts of the people of falsehood and the and their deceptions and the deception of the misguided people or the misguided scholars that we all know that do exist. Um, and this will help you, this principle. So inshallah, the Sheikh is going to explain it. And as we go through, you'll see. So the Sheikh, he says, continuing. وَالْقَائِدَةُ هِيَا أَنْ يُسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْحُكْمِ بِالْمُحْكَمِ وَمِنْ أَوْدَحِ الْمُحْكَمَاتِ وَأَجْلَى وَالْأَجْلَى الْوَاضِحَاتِ الْبَيِّنَاتِ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ أَنَّ الدُّعَاءَ إِبَادَةٌ لَا تُصْرَفُ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ التَّوَكَّلُ إِبَادَةٌ لَا يُصْرَفُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ الْخُضُوعُ وَالظُّلُّ إِبَادَةٌ لَا يُصْرَفُ Illa lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, in this paragraph now, continuing on, the Sheikh says, and the principle it is, it is that you stick to those ayat that are called the muhkamat, the clear, the clear verses, the clear verses in the Quran, and that you stick to them, 
and they clarify to us our position in all of our affairs, especially the affairs which relate to belief, our creed. Uh, so the Sheikh says, he says, he says, he goes on to say, for example, he says that a dua, supplication, it is worship. This is what we learn from those clear ayat in the Quran. The clear, distinct, clear ayat in the Quran, the verse in the Quran, that a dua, supplication, it is worship. And that you don't, you don't, any of that worship, you don't share with anyone else. You only direct that worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, trust, at tawakkul trust, that is worship as well. And so it, it's only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you don't direct it to anybody else. al khudu wa uh, you know, being humble and lowering yourself, lowering yourself and humbling yourself. This is a worship and it's you only humble yourself and lower yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Same thing. And so the Shaykh is giving some examples here. He continues. He says, What the la ilu? Bil asharat or will miat ala dalika fil kitab fi kitabi fil kitab wa sunna. Wahasatan, ibada ta dua, kathuratil adilla tu aleha fil Quran il karim. Min 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 akthar al ibadat, zikran li adilla tiha fil Quran ibada tu dua. وما ذلك كما قال كما قال بعض أهل العلم أكثر الشرك في العالمين يكون في الدعاء أكثر ما يكون الشرك في يكون الشرك في في العالمين في الدعاء يدعون غير الله سبحانه وتعالى ما أن الدعاء من أكثر العبادات ذكر لأدلة وجوب إخلاصه لله والنهي عن صرفه لغيره. so then the sheikh goes on to say to us <coughs> That he says the evidence are in the tens of hundreds of evidences from the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In particular, being specific to a supplication, du'a. That the Sheikh says that that there are numerous uh, evidences from the Quran, and the Sheikh goes on to say uh, with regards to du'a. And it is from the most mentioned of the types of worship as well from the Quran. And the evidence is from the Quran itself as well. As well as the Sunnah, but there's plenty of evidence within the Quran as well with regards to this. With regards to the worship uh, of dua, as in dua being worship or supplication, supplicating. And the Sheikh says, and with that, along with that then, and he says, and with that, the people of knowledge, the scholars, uh, they've uh, they've mentioned here that most of the shirk that occurs, most of the polytheism that occurs in the in in, in the universe or in the world, let's say, is directly connected to supplication or du'a. That most of it, the uh, a huge percentage, the majority percentage of shirk occurring is in that situation it's in the worship with the relation in relation to the worship of dua as in uh, supplicating and this is what the sheikh has mentioned here like and then he goes on to say where people you know openly uh, uh as we see even today openly calling upon other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supplicating to other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking other uh asking other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And and obviously when that happens, there's no sincerity there in the worship because it's not purely for Allah and rather it's for other than Allah. <laughs> so then the Sheikh brings an ayah for us here from uh, a number of ayat actually, a number of ayat, we'll go through them one by one, uh, showing us in different parts of the Quran, evidences with regards to a dua being worshipped. And the importance of it. So the Sheikh he begins. He, he begins with the first ayah. He says he mentions, "Woman, avalu min man yadouna min dun Allahi, man la yistajibu lahu ila yom al qiyamah." That's from Surah Al-Hakaf, verse five. 
وَالَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ مَا يَمْلِكُونَ مِن قِتْمِيرٍ That's from Surah Al-Fatir verse 13. وَمَنْ يَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَاهًا آخَرَ لَا بُرْهَانَ لَهُ بِهِ فَإِنَّمَا حِسَابُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ That's from Surah Al-Mu'minun verse 117. فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَاهًا آخَرَ That's from Surah Al-Shu'ara verse 213. فَدْعُوهُ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ That's from Surah Al-Ghafir verse 65. قُلِ دْعُوا الَّذِينَ زَعَمْتُمْ مِن دُونِهِ That's from Surah Al-Isra 56. قُلِ دْعُوا الَّذِينَ زَعَمْتُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ That's from Surah Al-Saba verse 22. Then the Shaykh goes on to say, آيَاتٌ كَثِيرَةٌ جِدًّا فِي الْقُرْآنِ فِي وُجُوبِ إِخْلَاسِ الدُّعَاءِ وَالتَّحْذِيرِ مِنَ اتِّخَاذِ الشُّرَكَائِ مَا اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى وَمَا ذَلِكَ فَالدُّعَاءِ مِنْ أَكْثِرِ مَا يَكُونُ فِي الشِّرْكُ فِيهِ الشِّرْكُ فِي الْعَالَمِينَ So then the Shaykh says there are many verses from the Qur'an that clearly show us and command us with being sincere in our dua i.e. calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only and warning us from taking partners and associates besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaykh says and with that then dua it is it shows us as mentioned earlier that it, 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 it's clear and shows us that that dua or supplication, this type of worship, this is where the majority of people, when they fall into shirk, they fall into shirk with regard to supplicating to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's sadly the, the larger percentage of larger proportion of people fall into shirk by way of supplicating to other than Allah. So let's have a uh, look at the meanings of these verses that uh, we read in Arabic. So the first one, what did we say? It was from Surah Al-Ahqaf. Let's go there. Surah Al-Ahqaf, verse 5. I'll just read the whole, I'll read all of the verses, inshallah, the complete verse. And who is more astray than one who calls, invokes besides Allah, such as will not answer him till the day of resurrection, and who are even unaware of their calls, invocations to them. So you can see how say this is. Um, move on to the next. Verse, this is from Surah Al-Fatir. Let's go there. Verse 13. I'll read the whole verse again. He merges the night into the day, i.e. the decrease in the hours of the night are added to the hours of the day. And he merges the day into the night, i.e. the decrease in the hours of the day are added to the hours of the night. And he has subjected the sun and the moon. Each runs its course for a term appointed. Such is Allah your Lord. He is a kingdom and those whom you invoke or call upon instead of him or not even a kitmir, the thin membrane over the date stone. Let's go on to the next ayah. Surah Al-Mu'minun verse 117. Surah Al-Mu'minun verse 117. And whoever invokes or worships besides Allah any other God of whom he has no proof, then his reckoning is only with his Lord. Surely... The disbelievers in Allah and in the oneness of Allah, polytheists, pagans, idolaters, etc. will not be successful. Next ayah. Surah Al-Shu'ara verse 213. Surah Al-Shu'ara verse 213. So invoke not with Allah another God, lest you be among those who receive punishment. The next ayah. Surah Al-Ghafir verse 65. <clears throat> He is the ever-living, la ilaha illa hu. None has a right to be worshipped in truth except Allah or he except he. So invoke him, making your worship pure for him alone by worshipping uh, by worshipping him alone and none else and by doing righteous deeds sincerely for Allah's sake only and not to show off and not to set up rivals with him in worship. All the praises and thanks be to Allah, the Lord of the Alameen, mankind, jinns and all that exists. So that's all I had I've read from there, from that surah, uh, from that verse. And then we move on to the next one. Surah Al-Ghafir, Surah Al-Isra. Surah Al-Isra. Let's go to Surah Al-Isra. Uh, verse 56. 
Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, call unto those besides him whom you pretend to be gods like angels, Isa, Jesus, Uzair, Ezra, etc. They have neither the power to remove the adversity from you nor even to shift it from you to another person. That's another clear evidence again. And then finally we move on to Surah to Sabah verse 22. So if you go there, uh, Surah to Sabah, give me a second. Verse 22, I'll read the whole ayah. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to those polytheists, pagans, etc. Call upon those whom you assert to be associate gods besides Allah. They possess not even the weight of an atom or a small ant, either in the heavens or on the earth, nor have they any share in either, nor there is for him any support from among them. So all these uh, evidences are clear. With regards to what the Shaykh has been talking talking about and discussing. So let's move on, inshallah. Faidan al Qaida tu fi had al Bab and and Yustam s uh and Yastam Sikal in Sanubil Muhkam Wamin Audahil Muhkamat wa Abyan il Bayinat and the Dua Ibadatun La Tusrafu Illa Lilla at the Wakalu Ibadatun La Yusrafu Illa Lilla Faida Jaa Ahadul Mulabisina ودعات الضلال ليصرف العامية عن هذا المحكم وأورد عليه حديثا لا يفهمه أو آية لم يعرف معناها أو أورد عليه شبهة فما الطريقة التي ينبغي أن يكون عليها وهو لا يعرف وهو لا يعرف مثل هذه الأمور ولا يستطيع أن يخوض معه لا في التمييز بين حديث ضعيف وصحيح ولا في مناقشة ولا في مناقشة في فحم هجة أو دليل لا يعرف ذلك فما الذي يصنعه في هذا الباب. So then the Sheikh he says so therefore this the principle that he uh, that that he's been talking about in the subject in this topic we're discussing today. Then he says it is and he reminds us he says it is that the a person sticks to those clear cut verses, the muhkamat, as mentioned in the ayah, the start of the lesson, the muhkamat. And the Sheikh says, and from the, the most clear and or from the clear clearest of those muhkamat and um uh that that make that clear our path in terms of understanding is what, what do we understand? The Sheikh says we understand from those uh, uh clear verses with regard to dua. A dua supplication is worship and that it should not be uh, shared with anyone else that uh, meaning that we supplicate to Allah alone only and we put our trust in Allah because a trust is worship so we put our trust in Allah only and we don't share it with anyone else and so the Sheikh says now that we know that then if if one of those one of the people who deceive, say if a person who's deceiving the people comes to us or to you, or those callers to misguidance and falsehood, if they come and they try to uh, uh, try to confuse and make a person, uh, a general person, the general a general Muslim, to you know to move them away from you know these clear cut verses, and they come with, for example, they may come with. Uh, you know, a hadith that that the that the general Muslim layman may not understand, or a verse that you know may, he may not understand the meaning of, or he may just come straight up. This person may come up to you or to us and say to us and uh, come with a doubt, with a doubt to try to make us doubtful about about the correct position. So then the Sheikh says, "What is the way?" What is incumbent upon us, or which which path, or what's the approach to take with regards to this? When when we find ourselves in this situation with somebody trying to deceive us or uh, bring about doubts in us to make us leave the truth, for example, or to follow their way, the Sheikh he says, and he says that this person he doesn't know, he doesn't know these affairs. Like as in the general Muslim may not know the affairs in in full detail. And that he's not able to, like, discuss with this person who's trying to misguide him in detail to debunk him, for example. 
uh, and he's not able to distinguish, uh, uh, for example, uh, a hadith that he's not able to distinguish the weak from the authentic, and then he's not able to establish, you know, the evidences because of this. He doesn't know that. So the Sheikh says, so what is it? So so what is he to do in this situation? What is he to do? And the Sheikh wasn't explained now. So he says, we'll start off this page. He says, يَرْجِعُ إِلَى الْمُحْكَمْ يَقُولُ لَهُ الدُّعَاءُ إِبَادًا وَهَذَا أَمْرٌ مُحْكَمٌ بَيِّنٌ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ أَدِلَّتُهُ كَثِيرَةٌ جِدًّا وَهَذَا الَّذِي تَذْكُرُ لِي الْآنِ مِنَ المنا... من ال... من المتشابح وَلَنْ أَنْتَقِلَ عَنْ هَذَا الْمُحْكَمِ لِشَيْءٍ مِنَ المتشابح الذي... مُتَشَابِحٍ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ عِنْدِي جَوَابٌ عَلَى هَذَا الْمُتَشَابِحِ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُهُ سَتَجِدُ جَوَابَهُ عِنْدَ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ أما أنا لن أت... لن أتزحزح عن هذا المحكم فلن أدعو غير الله ولن أتوكل إلا على الله ولن ألتجع إلا إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى ولا أطلب الشفاعة ولا أطلب الشفاعة إلا من الله لأنها ملك لله قل لله الشفاعة جميعا. So the Sheikh he explains here. So what's the approach if if it was a general person? Maybe doesn't know much, but knows it enough to protect himself from the evil of the people that when they do come with these things, these doubts, or try to misguide you, or try to uh, throw you off the truth that you're on, and try to make you join their way. Then the sheikh he says, he says, what should this person do in this situation? He should, he says, he should return to the clear cut verses, the muhkam, the muhkam, the clear cut verses. And he should say, with regards to du'a here, because we're talking about du'a, the Shaykh's talking about du'a, and supplication, he says, return to the muhkam, the clear-cut verses. And he should say to that person who's come to him, he should say, that supplication is worship, and this affair is muhkam, is clear-cut, is clear in the Qur'an al Karim, is clear-cut, there's no doubt about it, that supplication a dua is worship. And the evidences are many. And the Sheikh says that this is what, you know, you should mention, uh, that it should be mentioned. But with regards to the, the not so clear, then the, uh, the Sheikh says that he should, one should say, I won't move away from the clear court verses. These are the clear court verses. I'm not going to move away from those clear court verses. And the affair is clear. In this, in this example, that dua, supplication, is worship. No doubt about it. And this is my answer. And that is it. And the, then you could also say, as the Sheikh brings the example, says, but the people of knowledge, the scholars, they can come and they can explain and uh, go further into further detail with regards to what the other person might have. But the Sheikh says, that one, uh, but the person should say, then after that, that I'm not going to, Go away or move out from Or move away from these clear cut verses In the Quran So I'm not going to uh, Supplicate to other than Allah I'm not going to do dua to other than Allah I'm not going to place my trust Except upon Allah I'm not going to seek refuge Except with Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala And I'm not going to uh, uh, Seek Or request or seek out Intercession Except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Because as we remember from the previous lessons Two, three lessons That the Sheikh mentioned And the evidence is, the evidence is here again here The one that's in the highlighted text At the end of the sentence That intercession is, is, a, is, a, is a property It's the ownership of Allah Allah owns the intercession all of it And as mentioned in this ayah Say that to Allah belongs all of the shafa'ah that all of the intercession is Allah's. Allah gives it to evils. And if you want to go back, if you missed the lesson from last week or two weeks ago, sorry, go to that, refer to that lesson uh, from two weeks ago. Lesson 15 or from 14, 15 and, uh, 14 and 15. Because the Sheikh explains there with regards to Shafa uh, and his conditions uh, and who will be able to intercede and who uh, will receive the uh, uh, intercession. Uh, who will be interceded for. Uh, there's explanation of that by the Sheikh in those lessons. So, 
The Sheikh continues in this uh, final uh, paragraph or two. He says, بِمِثْلِ هَذَا يَسْلَمُ الْمُسْلِمُ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَلَى مِنْ شُبَهِ أَهْلِ الظَّلَالِ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفْ تَفَاسِيلَ الْأَجْوِبَ عَلَيْهَا وَتَفَاسِيلَ الْأَجْوِبَ عَلَى شُبَهِ أَهْلِ الظَّلَالِ مَوْجُودَةٌ عِنْدَ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ الرَّاسِخِينَ وَهَذَا حَدُّ الْعَامِي وَلِهَذَا لَا يَنْبَغِي لِلْعَامِي أَنْ يَخُوضَ مَا أَئِمَّةِ الظَّلَالِ فِي تَفْنِيدِ الشُّبُهَاتِ هَذِهِ لَيْسَتْ لِلْعَامِي هَذِهِ لِأَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ الْعَامِي يَكْفِيهِ الِاسْتِمْسَاكُ بِالْمُحْكَمِ وَلِأَرَادُ عَنْ شُبُهَاتِ أَهْلِ الظَّلَالِ لَإِنْ لَا تَقْعَ فِي قَلْبِهِ فَيَزِيغ So then the Sheikh says, so he says like this, as a, the examples he's given us and the way he's, the, the way he's given that we can handle these situations, if we find ourselves in, in those situations, then the Sheikh says, by following this way, then the Muslim, he can protect himself and safeguard himself by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the doubts of the people of misguidance, even if he doesn't know the details or detailed answers to be able to reply to uh, these people when they come with these doubts, if he doesn't have that uh, array of knowledge or vastness of that knowledge for that particular topic, then this is the way he can take an approach he can take to protect and safeguard himself. Um, and, uh, and, you know, that these details or more, the more so of these details or the full answer to the to these doubts, well, they are with the people of knowledge uh, who are deeply or firmly rooted in uh, knowledge, the scholars. And and as mentioned, the Sheikh says that this is the limit of the general Muslim. And for this reason, it is incumbent and it's important uh, for the general person, the general Muslim, uh, and that he uh, that he doesn't um, get into deep conversation. Or discussion with the uh, people of misguidance uh, in trying to, um, you know, trying to repel or extinguish the doubts that they have, because he may, because he does not know all the affairs properly, uh, he may find himself in trouble. So he has to safeguard himself first from falling into any issues. And and uh, and, and and the sheikh says that this isn't for the general person to undertake anyway. Um, and he says that this is for the people of knowledge. And he says that what suffices the general Muslim is that he sticks to the clear-cut verses, as he mentioned earlier. Stick to the clear-cut verses, don't move away from them. That is enough. And just move, stay away from those, uh, uh, from those uh, doubts of the people of misguidance. Uh, uh, and why? So to hope not to fall into uh, uh, their... Um, Mis, uh, their misguidance and that your heart doesn't go towards uh, the misguidance and you end up being deceived. So this is to safeguard you. Yeah. So then the Sheikh finishes off with the dua. He says, Wa asal Allah Azza wa Jalla an yahfada alayna jami'an deenana alladhi huwa ismatu amrina wa an yuslaha lana dunyana alati fiha maashuna wa an yuslaha wa an yuslaha lana akhiratana alati fiha maaduna وَأَنْ يَجْعَلَ الْحَيَاةَ زِيَادَةً لَنَا فِي كُلِّ خَيْرٍ وَالْمَوْتَ رَاحَةً لَنَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَرٍ وَأَنْ يَغْفِرَ لَنَا وَلِوَالِدِينَا وَلِمَشَايِخِنَا وَلِلْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ الْأَحْيَاءِ مِنْهُمْ وَالْأَمْوَاتِ إِنَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ So in this dua, generally, the Sheikh asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he preserve us all and preserve our deen uh, uh, you know because our deen is our protection you know from the hellfire we follow our deen so for our deen and the affair that we're in our religion Islam and that he preserves us and that he rectifies for us our uh, our dunya that we live in and that he rectifies uh, our hereafter for us which is our return and that he makes our uh, lives full of uh, goodness and khair and makes our death uh, an ease for us from every evil and that he, we ask him that uh, he forgives us and our parents and our 
uh, our teachers and our scholars, Mashaikhina and the, and the Muslims, uh, the male and female Muslims and the male and female believers, those of them who are alive and those of them who have passed, Innahu tabaraka wa ta'ala ghafurur rahim. Indeed, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is oft forgiving and merciful. Yeah. And then the Shaykh finishes off. He says, Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So inshallah we'll continue the next lesson which is from here. Uh, next week which is we're going to be beginning, we'll be beginning the third principle, the third uh, nullifier of Islam inshallah. So we'll stop there and uh, we'll continue next week next Friday, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.